Wondering why you ate that entire pint of ice cream? Research shows it may be all in your head. Functional MRIs show how your brain activity changes while you're doing something. In our case, eating. Are we going to try kale? Are we going to do one more? Yes. It's going to be a long 12 minutes. Yeah. Kale, yeah. Dr. Eric Stice is a professor of psychiatry at Stanford University, where he evaluates how our brains react to food. We just have one set of reward circuitry in our brains. And so what's activated by food, alcohol, drugs, it's the same circuitry. So when you engage that reward circuitry with really highly palatable foods, it creates a, a dynamic chain that just basically sets people up to overeat forever. Food changes our brains. The food we eat on a regular basis can decrease the amount of pleasure we get from that food. The highly processed foods that have a kind of higher density of sugar and fat and, and salt uh, really activate our reward circuitry much more than organic food that you know, we've been eating for centuries. We're definitely discovering the effects of introducing foods that are like extra rewarding, that it, it just makes it a lot harder for people to kind of make healthy food choices. This is known as neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change in response to our actions and environment. There aren't a lot of foods that occur in nature that are high in both fat and sugar. Humans have created foods, like ice cream, to contain both fat and sugar. And eating those foods has changed our brains. Whee! To test this, I drank three liquids in an fMRI. Wine, a milkshake, and kale juice. Okay, Mary Beth, how are you doing? Great. Wonderful. So we're getting ready to start that again. It will be exactly the same as the last time, except this time, of course, you'll see pictures of wine, and you'll get tiny tastes of wine. So again, just wait to swallow the same. The results? This is my brain on wine, which I have fairly regularly, and kale juice, which I don't. The yellow sections show that the kale juice activated my pleasure centers of my brain more than wine. And kale juice also produced a greater pleasure response than a chocolate milkshake. According to Stice, it's like building a tolerance. The more you eat a certain food, the less reward you get when you eat it. But your brain still associates these foods with intense pleasure. So whenever you see a cue about these foods, say a photo or you drive by your favorite fast food joint, you want them. And when you go to eat them, your brain doesn't sense the same intense pleasure. So you eat more in hopes of more pleasure through quantity. It's like food nostalgia. And these food cues are everywhere. Stice and other researchers are working on ways to reduce our vigilance to food cues, to retrain our brains to change our food choices. Because according to his research, the better your brain is at associating food cues with eating, the more likely you are to make choices that maybe aren't the healthiest. Many of the secrets of making better choices are all in your head, which can be empowering for someone exhausted by today's diet and wellness culture. I just think we have to accept that and move away from the shame and the judging and figure out what we can do to kind of create an environment that's less challenging for people to make healthy food choices and kind of change how their brains respond to these stimuli in a way that makes it healthier for them to kind of you know, eat vegetables and fruits instead of less healthy food. I'm Mary Beth Albright, and I report on food and mental health for The Washington Post.